tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Animation. Let's get started with animation. What you see here is the sweetness of dynamic simulation. It's unpredictable and you have to play with the parameters in order to get it right. But what is right? It depends on what you want to achieve. And uh, this is just pl me playing with basically one parameter plus just another one, just a tint of that other one. But it's mainly about one single parameter in the end constraint force field settings. We could talk for hours about the n-world nucleus, that is the simulation of cloth, particles, etc. But I'll show you just one example. I think this is good for concentrating on a single parameter in order to understand the whole system better. And uh, there's nothing more and nothing less than that. So let's create a new scene. And in the new scene, I want to turn something into cloth and for cloth you might remember you need lots of geometry because cloth deforms nicely and uh, such a crude cube cannot be deformed nicely because it doesn't have it has six faces and nothing else so um, I go to the attribute editor and to the polycube settings and I widen it and I raise the depth and now I crank up the subdivisions in these two axes and just a little bit in the middle axis. So I have lots of geometry. I could have even more than that. Now I go to FX. We need to be under FX in order to see the end cloth. There is a uh, FX section here where you can choose end cloth as well. So I selected this and I turn it into end cloth. By the way, with the NURB surface it doesn't work. You need to convert the NURB surface to polygon surface, which is very simple. And by the way, um, there's a 12-part course on Udemy and on Skillshare about NURBS modeling from beginner to very advanced. Create end cloth. And uh, now when we run the simulation, we have to wait until the red line is finished until frame 120. That's my simulation range here. This is this number. Now it's ready. And I can scrub back and forward. That's the beauty of this um, simulation here. And uh, I see that the cloth is behaving like cloth. Pretty nice. When I rotate the cube, which is not a cube anymore, uh, the simulation restarts again. And I get a different deformation, obviously, because I rotated in the initial state. So now it's quite asymmetrical. That's because I started with a, with this rotation. Now I want to apply an end constraint, and that end constraint is a force field. Let's go to the options and reset the settings and apply it. Now, um, this does funny things and uh, we have in the outliner we have the dynamic constraint number one and here in the attribute editor we have the dynamic constraint number one as well and the simulation is done and we get a totally different behavior with this part here at the top this comes from this locator the dynamic constraint it, by default, it uh, starts at the center of our object. I could also apply it to only a few parts, components of my object, but um, here I just applied it to the whole object. When I move this locator down here, I get this odd simulation part here, uh, which uh, irritates a little bit. 
But uh, now when I go back to the beginning, the simulation behaves differently again because the effect of this top part here starts later and since my cloth has already picked up some speed here it ha doesn't have that dynamic effect. When I move the locator further up or to the left or to the right I get a different simulation again. Let's wait until the red line is finished. And now we run the simulation. No effect at all because it is too far away. I can also scale it up, make it really big, but this does not work here in the in the viewport. So I scale it up here in the attribute editor, three by three by three. So it's three times bigger, as you can see. And I move it down. Just like here, you see already the effect because it's doing this simulation with it. It's a spring force field, basically. So that's very beautiful, I think, and totally unpredictable. If you want this piece of cloth be mu much more stable here, you need to go into the parameters. And I won't tell you where to go there stiffness for example would be a good idea but what i'll do now is i hide the dynamic constraint because it irritates me when we change it i press h so it's just hidden it's just it's still working and i still have picked it in the dynamic constraint shape we find the constraint method which is spring alternatively you could choose a weld and rubber band try them out scroll down to the strength and to the glue strength. These are the two parameters I'm going to play with. So first of all, the strength is zero, but the effect is there. So when I raise the strength now, I get a different simulation. I need to go back to the beginning again and wait. Depends on the power of your machine. In maybe in your case, it goes faster. Isn't that amazing? Very nice indeed. Let's put this to a negative value. Minus 10. See, the it works in an opposite way. And that's just so realistic. The N-world in Maya is so powerful and it's totally unpredictable what you have here. For example, you could start creating a character and using this as a nightgown, for example. But um, when you go a little bit further, it's already gone. So it looks more like an abstract vase, for example. And it turns into a, another object here. So let's uh, return to, say... W one and I think sooner or later this piece of cloth will fall down it looks like there was some constraint there some something which uh, interferes with the cloth but it's not a, um, a physical constraint it's um, the force field only so let's uh, reduce the glue strength now the glue strength was one and now it's zero 0 0.5 something in between 0 0.2 0 0.8 the strength set to 100 The strength set to minus 100. Now finally, you can animate these parameters and you can also animate the position of this locator. So uh, let us start here at the very beginning with the position here. And what I'll do, I 
just pick this node, which is the dynamic constraint one node, which has the translation. And with Shift W, I set a keyframe for the translate parameters. Now I go to the very end of the simulation and I move it over here and down there and a little bit forward. This doesn't count here because it's just trying to play with an interpolation of whatever kind. But uh, when you run the simulation from the very beginning now, uh, it changes dramatically because we uh, change the position of the locator. Now let's animate the, this is for a final test, let's animate the strength now. The strength, uh, we can leave it like this here. A little bit later, we reduce the strength to zero, or actually to minus two maybe. The keyframe is being set automatically because I have auto keyframe switched on here. Otherwise I would have to right mouse click and set a key. So the simulation is almost finished again. And now it looks like this. And the cloth falls up, uh, off because I changed the strength value to a negative value. Well, with this I'll leave you for now. Experiment with these, this parameter and plus the two others and uh, explore the possibilities of n-cloth. It's very addictive. Bye-bye.